All right, I am going to be stopping this one a lot because I am air frying some ribs. I'm excited about that. Have you ever had air fried ribs? Whoa, my God. They are so, 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 so good. I cannot wait. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Air frying some ribs. I'm making some rice right now, so I've got to listen out for the sounds coming from the kitchen to know when I have to go in and um, clean up my hands and everything, get all this off my hands, and go make a little something something happen. Right now, I am doing a very dramatic chop on this piece that I was working on. Holler in the comments if you figured out last video what it is or if you can finally tell from this video what it is. Whatever the situation, um, let me hear from you. So yeah, so I am um, now having to size this down considerably. So that's what you're watching happen. What I really love about this table is that it does not mar easily at all. I dig into this with a whole slew of different tools and it has not put a permanent scratch in this table yet. So that is pretty great. Look at that. You see all that excess clay? I can't plan to save my life, guys. <laughs> please, please, when you start your sculpture journey, be better than me, okay? <laughs> be better than me. Learn how to plan your stuff out so that you're not just wasting time and effort and putting it into clay that you're only gonna end up removing. Cause that's what I do and it's stupid, but I can't seem to stop myself. So there's that. All right guys, I gotta stop, wash my hands real quick, tend to this business, I'll be back. Okay everybody, I'm back. Did what I had to do in the kitchen cleaned my hands off and I'm right back at it. I've got exactly 15 minutes before my rice is done and I have to stop that from simmering on low and then I'll be able to return and get back to this. And because I can easily get uh, very caught up in the zone and lost when sculpting like this, Alexa's going to tell me when my time is up. So no worries. I'll hear that alarm and more than likely you'll hear that alarm. I'm looking for a particular tool right now. Don't mind me. As always, you guys know it's right in my face and I'm overlooking it. Ah, fooled you. This time, it was right in my face and I saw it. Look at me being marvelous. So I'm just taking and slicing away the excess instead of deciding to re-roll this or do anything that's going to take an inordinate amount of time when it doesn't need to. put anything in the comments last time and I don't know if that's because you don't know what it is I can't believe that you don't know what it is if you don't know what it is as in you're unfamiliar with the existence of such a thing I don't know what to tell you I really don't know I want you to I don't know watch YouTube videos um, about ocean creatures and things like that or read some books on aquatic life and the varying different kinds that there are or if you're familiar with these and I was just sculpting it so poorly that you were just like, I really don't know what the hell that is. Well, shame on me, but hopefully I've gotten closer and you have a clue now. Because I knew what my intentions are. Now, that doesn't mean I always sculpt masterfully enough so that my intentions can be easily determined. But I think I started this out pretty damn solid. So there's that. I'm going to roll him up a little bit more. Why? Because I want a little less um, length on this particular piece. I see where his tail is already getting some tension cracks, so I'm just hitting that with some water and smoothing it around a little bit. And I can go back in and redefine that area, so don't, you know, don't stress. No worries. I love when I spray water and it looks all smooth and, you know, just really sleek. But I shouldn't be doing a lot of that at this point because there's still 
a good little amount of detail. And this is a vulnerable area right here. So I'm constantly pressing it and I'm pressing it in an arc so that I can know that that clay is compacted. So you see right here, I'm pressing in, but I'm holding with this finger so that I'm smashing the clay into itself. That's very, very important for this area, very important. Because what you don't wanna do is be stretching and pulling in a way that's separating, I guess you can refer to it as fibers of clay on the interior parts, because when it starts to dry and the clay shrinks as it dries, those areas of tension that you created, they're gonna manifest as cracks. And then that's a whole nother problem because it's been drying at a particular rate, at a very specific rate. And now you have to go in there and try to fix stuff up and you're re-wetting re stuff, re-moisturizing it. And the other parts of your sculpture have already started to dry out, you know, in deep layers going beyond the, the um, external layer and a couple of other levels in. And now they don't match no more. And now they're gonna dry differently. And now you gotta worry about if cracks are gonna appear. So, you know, try to keep everything on the same level as much as you can. Now, what just happened here was me scraping away to take some thickness out of it, but I like the scrape lines that I made. And also, because I hesitated with sort of a stop motion, as I was pulling away, it created an effect that I like. Now, I'm gonna have to zoom in on this when I edit so that you can really see what just happened here because I don't have the best imagination. So I usually have to get my inspiration to try new things from watching other artists work. And then of course, you know, you're sort of wondering like, mm, should I replicate that? Is that ingenuous as an artist? And I know what you're gonna say, as long as you're doing your own thing. But sometimes you feel like, well, if my own thing wasn't to move in this particular way, but now I'm doing it because I saw this artist do it, is that really my own thing? So, you know, I go through that level of questioning with my work and with the prospect of getting inspiration from anyone else. So this, I sort of fell into on my own and I'm liking what's happening right there, like a lot, okay? So I see where I need to, I want this more curved. So I'm just taking out some area there. And this effect that I'm creating now is going to do better when the clay is less sticky. And I could wait, but you guys, I've told you before, I'm very, very impatient. And especially once I luck up on something, Ooh, it's just like, no, 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 I wanna see how that's gonna turn out right now, you know? So that's what we're dealing with. I am gonna have to let this sit out a while and get um, leather hard before I start moving in for the detail that I've started attempting right now. Carefully pulling some clay over and reshaping this area of the head part. And again, trying my damnedest to keep it compacted. So I'm using the tool to do a rounding motion, rounding and flattening, all, service, all serving the purpose of compacting in that area. The same thing is going to happen here because I still want him flatter and with less height than he currently has. So. I'm getting rid of that on the outermost part. And now I'm just gonna do some handwork. I got some dry clay in there and I didn't mean to do that, but it's okay. It's not a reason for me to panic or anything like that. I feel like I'm talking too much. Hush, I don't need an amen corner, I'm just saying. So I'm going to hush now. Oh my God, this effect is gonna be so dope. And now let's see what size we're at. So before we were at six inches. Now we're at a little over four and that's much better for me. That, that two inches made quite a difference. Um, I, I know that I'm going to do a few of these. So I'm going to make a smaller one because I just feel like there's somebody out there who has been intrigued by these animals. And the animals? intrigued by these creatures, let's just do that, <laughs> in the way that I have. And if they're not a fan of the chunky jewelry, I do want them to have an option. And of these, I'm definitely gonna make some silicone molds. I'll be picking up hopefully this weekend, <clears throat> excuse me guys, some of the other pendants that I created that did make it safely out of the kiln, yay me. Um, and from those pieces, I'm going to do my first experiment with the cornstarch and silicone molds that I was taught to do 
on YouTube University as I learn so many other things. And then I'll be able to make four inch creatures like this, molds that are four inches. Um, I definitely wanna make another mold that's maybe like two inches. And if I can control my heavy hands, I would like to make one, did I say two inches? I, I meant to say three inches if I said two inches. So I wanna make this, which is a four inch mold. I wanna make another one that's about an inch smaller, so it'll be about that big. And that's gonna be a three inch mold. And then I wanna do one that's, well, I don't know, cause three inches is right there. I was about to say smaller, like two inches. I don't think I'm messing with no two inches yet. And I can't look through my magnifying glass. You know, I'm, I'm using this bad boy as um, a spotlight to help me see, but I can't look through it as a magnifying glass unless I use an eye patch. And who feels like going through all that? I don't. So yeah, I think we'll just scratch the two inch one and I'll stick with the four inch and the three inch. That's Alexa telling me that it's time to check my rights. So I'm going to heed her call, go wash my hands, stop this video. I'll be back in a few. Alexa, stop. Okay, I'm back. I've got another 15 minutes um, before the air fryer goes off and I will have made the first batch of um, air fried ribs. And like I said, if you've never had air fried ribs, I don't know what your life is about. It's, they are so good. And I don't cook mine, like the air, the air fryer default setting is 375. I don't, I never use that. You know, I'm black. I drop that bad boy down to 350 and call it a day. You know, that's our magical setting for everything. It seems like 350. So for the ribs, I drop it down even lower to 325 because my whole thing is it'll look like it's, you know, beautifully, beautifully air fried on the outside, but then you can mess around and get tough meat because it really didn't cook long or slow enough for it to be nice and tender, you know, and I like mine very, very tender. So I drop it down to 325 and I usually let them cook for about a good, I don't know, 25 to 30 minutes, right around in that range. And when I tell you, those bad boys are so tender, so delicious. And of course, the delicious part comes in, that, that's on you. You know, how do you flavor your ribs? How do you, not flavor, but how do you season your ribs? I have to be careful not to go too heavy on the salt. But other than that, I usually do a pretty damn good job of seasoning those bad boys. So, yeah, this is going to be a great little dinner. I didn't even make a vegetable, y'all. I just made um, some yellow rice to go with it. And that's about it. I was thinking of making some peas, some frozen peas that I have in the freezer, but I had also bought a steak and I decide, decided that I wanna leave that particular vegetable for the steak. So it's just a simple meal of rice and air fried ribs. I like the Carolina tangy gold sauce, but Thai is more fla more um, a fan of like the hickory smoked, you know, dark red sauce. I like the almost mustardy yellow. So. I leave the ribs um, unsauced so that he can have whatever he prefers. I'm loving this. I think they're it's such interesting looking creatures. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. So now I'm trying to decide <sighs> how I wanted to do this part. And I think I just decided. We're going to see. I just want to lay the foundation. I'm not trying to be precise. Um, but I want, I need to be able to see where I'm going to head with this. So I can do a little bit at this stage while the clay is this moist, like I said, even though it's a, uh, considerably too sticky for me, but it will harden. And then I'll be able to go in and really chisel out and define some details. be so disappointed if somebody doesn't write in the comments and tell me what this is that they know what this is but I've lived with disappointment before I'll be okay just know that you contributed to it this time and that's uncool because you can make me very happy so easily just by playing along humoring an old girl what's the problem Now this, I can't even move off of the table. I'm glad I sat it forward far enough um, before starting this particular session because I can't move it until this clay is um, 
bless her heart. Because I will, it's real delicate in between these uh, fins or these designs or whatever. And it, it won't take kindly to being moved around a lot. So, like I said, you're always, always got to be thinking about what phase you're, what phase of design you're in, what is the desired result, and how much patience you have you're going to need in order to get to do what you want to do without disturbing something that you took a lot of time creating, you know? I don't know if you guys remember, but I told you I started keeping a journal. Um, my mother used to call me the absent-minded professor. She called me that humorous and loving nickname ever since I could remember because I've always been intensely forgetful. And she just used to marvel at that, at how quickly I could be given an instruction and then told something in the midst of giving that instruction or had that instruction added onto, and it was like, you just pretty much erased the first thing that you said to me. Because I was going to remember the last one, but I wasn't going to remember what you first said. So she always referred to me as the absent-minded professor. So if you're already forgetful at a young age, you can just imagine, once you're in your late 50s like I am, that's not getting any better. Hold on one second, guys. I've got to check all my ribs. I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back. I had to go um, stop that first batch of ribs. I forgot to set the timer to five minutes. I actually had it on 15 minutes and I needed to get over to those. So I have, now I've put the second batch in and I set the timer for the right amount of time, 15 minutes, and I'll go check on those. When they're done, then I have to flip them over, let them cook another 15 minutes, and then um, dinner's done. This, this lightweight, non-committal dinner that I'm doing is all done. And then I can just focus on what I'm doing right here. So yeah, back to what I was saying. So that's the way my mother always referred to me as the um, you know, absent-minded professor. And like I said, once you're in your late 50s, you know, it's not like your memory's gonna improve. So I'm getting more and more forgetful. And I've never been good with recalling dates. So like, the only reason I, I'm about to put this date out in front of you is because I have social media to keep track of it for me. For a long time, I was saying, I've been sculpting for a year. I was saying that at the beginning of this year, and it wasn't true, I had been sculpting since 2022. I think January 10th was the first um, sculpture that I ever posted to Facebook. So like I said, I, I've been saying, I've been sculpting for a year, I've been sculpting for a year. No, it was actually two years. So I can lose track of time very quickly. So imagine when you start working with different types of clay. I'm not right now. Right now, I'm currently stuck on and all the way in love with 609 Miller Clay. But I started out with a different brand that I call Chutes Clay, who is a master sculptor that whose style I admire greatly. And he was kind enough to share with me the type of clay that he uses. Now, I didn't fall all the way in love with that clay just because it had a sort of grainy texture that felt a little too strange to me. I like smooth, so I ended up transitioning over to a clay that was being used at the first studio where I had Kiln Rental. And she was using 609 Miller, and I really loved the feel of it. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna start getting that. But I'm being told by um, veteran sculptors that you're going to start experimenting with different types of clay, you know, porcelain and all types of stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, you know, if you say so. And they're pretty much like, oh, it's not what we say, it's what we know. So all I can see with the bad memory that I've had since childhood that is just being accentuated by the aging process, once I start experimenting with those different things, I'm not gonna know what the hell I used to create what. So that goes not only for the clay, that's gonna become a problem when it's time to glaze. And I don't remember like what glaze did I use on this one to achieve that effect? So I've always been the type that has purchased a lot of journals. And I get on this binge where I think I'm going to write out my creative ideas or I'm just going to journal my life and that's going to be my legacy. And when I'm gone, something that people will have to read to know how Terry thinks as if. Um, and the novelty would just wear off. You know, it was like having a new toy. You want to play with it, play with it, play with it. And then after a while, you're just like, all right, you know, I know exactly what this does. I know exactly how to work with it. And it's not so interesting to me anymore. Same thing with journals. Um, the closest I got to maintaining any consistency was when I was a spoken word artist and I was constantly writing poems. But that was different. 
you know, I mean, I was writing them down because I needed to write them down. Shit, I'm not Jay-Z, you know. And, um, of course, to refer to, to study. But with this, there's so many different components. So I write all of those components down in my pottery journals. I write a description of the piece. I write the date that I started the piece. I write the dry date. You know, when I finally left it alone, I felt like I've smoothed it out to where I want it to be. And I have tented it and put it out to be left alone and to dry slowly until it's time to be bisque fired. So of course, I put the bisque fire date, I put the glaze date. And once I go to pick it up, um, I put the date of pickup, which is usually the date of payment because I pay for the bisque firing and I pay a small amount for the glaze firing. So you don't wanna get too far ahead of yourself, especially when you're as prolific as I am because you'll start to lose track of, well, did I pay for the, the glaze firing on this one or just the bisque? So I just try to do it as each phase, I try to make a payment, the payment as each phase is occurring. So I write that down in the journal. I write the approximate size. I write any other details that are pertinent to the piece that I'm creating. So now I don't have to worry about remembering. I can just go back, find the, the description and or the number that this piece is referred to as, or these pieces are referred to as in my journal. And then I can just revisit everything that went into making it. And you know, um, it's notorious within the art industry that artists don't gather the acclaim or the recognition that they should have while they lived, while they were right here at your disposal to ask a billion questions and to vibe with and to get inside of their head instead of always trying to determine or figure out or assume that a particular piece means a particular thing. You can have the artist tell you exactly where their mind was at. And maybe that means nothing to you because you still see it a certain way. I, but I'd be wanting to know what was the artist's goal, regardless of how the piece occurs for me. So now, I have that. Now, I haven't started writing any really personal notes about the pieces in the journal. And you know why that is? That's because I'm not deep, you know? People always want artists to have this story and, you know, this, this uh, spiritual calling when they're making a piece. Now, that's not to say that I won't evolve to that point. But, you know, at 57, will I? Will I? I, you know, I, I sort of doubt it. What I have is a particular skill set. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't fucking resist. What I have is, um, you know, a universe-granted skill set. To create i don't have the best imagination um but i do have the powers of creative mimicry to a degree i can draw what i see um and now that i'm out of the medium of two dimension two dimensional creations i've discovered that i can also sculpt what i see and what an amazing thing that is so um i'm sorry i lost my train of thought right there okay yeah so i was talking about the stories so it's not very often that there's a legacy series that I'm creating. When those, even when those happen, they happen by mistake. My good friend um, Breezy Bridget Turner calls them creative rants because what'll happen is I'll have this image or vision pop into my head for something that I want to create, and I have to get started on it. And while I'm working on it, related visions are usually born. And like, there's one series that I have on my website. That's artbyterry.com. Art by Terry T E R R I dot com. If you go look up the series called Black. It's literally called Black, period, the series. It's probably about 15 pieces deep. It came because I wanted to draw one thing and one thing only. I had a vision of a woman with her hands upstretched toward the sky. She um, had a huge afro and she looked like she was born of or turning into a puddle of blackness, a, pu a pool of ink, just a, a substance that was had obsidian depths and I needed her to have the same look. And I did that on um, one piece digitally and it came out really dope. And the next thing I know, another vision. I knocked that out, then another one. And like 15 pieces later, in the matter of maybe two days, I had created this entire series. Somebody just um, added to their collection because they have one of the pieces in that series and they brought a second one. They either have one or two. Thank you, James McGee. And he just added to his collection. And like I said, there are 15 of those. And did I have a real thought process? Not on the first one. Like I said, on the first one, it's supposed to be just that one woman. And then as it built, it became, what are some things that when I see them, when I look at them, I'm able to warmly embrace them because I'm like, yo, that's us. That is so black, you know? And there were a lot of different things and they kept popping into my head. So I kept creating them until they presented themselves no more. So that's how things occur for me. So three sisters, one fro. That was just an image that popped into my head while I was out, out on the patio. And while I was working on that, the next image came to mind. So I created that. And that's how things, you know, happen for me. So there's not always this, I don't know, you know, grandiose story where it's like, well, while visiting the Louvre, I was 
fearing the ancestors. The people don't even know that. The Louvre, they were speaking to me. No, it's, it's not like that. Do I feel like there's an ancestral pull? Do I feel like there's something that occurs that I'm just not faith-based enough or intelligent enough to recognize for what it is? Yeah, more than likely, you know, more than likely. But until I am able to speak with you about that experience, about that recognition, about knowing that I'm feeling something different, something other than just an image popping into my head, oh, trust me, I'm going to share that with you. It's not a problem. But for right now, it's just, oh, I thought of this cool thing. Let me try to do this cool thing. We can figure out what the cool thing means later. Maybe it will speak to me after it's born. Maybe it won't speak to me at all. And what is most likely to happen, it's going to speak to you. You're going to tell me about it. And you're going to make me have a new appreciation for it. Because something that I did solely for my purposes and my pleasure resonated with you and allowed me to see things through your eyes. And that's beautiful. That's the end of this session. I'm going to stop building on him because I need to get him, let him get leather hard so that I can go ahead and really start going in with some details. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a picture of this area so you can see it up close because there's going to be some of that going on. I, I want him to be a little bit ornate. So as always, thank you for listening to me prattle on. I appreciate you. I'm going to go charge the phone after I take this picture. I'm going to eat and then I'm going to be back because let me see. Yeah, it's 8.05, man. It's still early. I've got another hour of sculpting at least left into me. Love y'all. Mean it. Peace.